It's me, a better me, P90X. And uh, today I want to talk about um, how to actually do a target heart rate calculation. I'd recommend that you actually do that three days in a row and then create an average over three days. Um, the reason why is you may have had a stressful night's sleep. Uh, you may have done P90X just before you've gone to bed. Uh, or you may just have had a real sluggish day and um, that all that actually does have an effect on how well you sleep. So I recommend for three days in the morning before your feet hit the floor, you take your pulse. Now, you may not be as disciplined as I am about doing that. It's sometimes your alarm clock is across the room. So uh, at a minimum, um, you want to just try and get at least one day of the week at an absolute minimum. Um, that you're going to take your resting heart rate. So that's the first step is just to get your resting heart rate. Again, I'd recommend uh, over a three day period, but if you can't, that's fine. Um, you can just go with one day, but just realize that that could skew your results, especially if you're doing P90X uh, pretty close to bed. The actual method that I'm using is created by someone who, by the last name of Carvonen. It's the uh, most widely accepted way of calculating it. Um, there are basically five steps. And so let's start with step number one. The first step that you're gonna do is actually get your resting heart rate. Uh, and the way you're gonna do that is before you get up in the morning, before your feet hit the floor, um, you're going to basically for a minute, just lay there and uh, calculate your heart rate. Just monitor the uh, beats by putting your uh, finger on your wrist and getting your pulse. And you're gonna do that for a minute. Um, that will be your resting heart rate. I'd recommend that you actually do that three days in a row and then create an average over three days. Um, the reason why is you may have had a stressful night's sleep. Uh, you may have done P90X just before you've gone to bed. Uh, or you may just have had a real sluggish day and um, that all that actually does have an effect on how well you sleep. So I'd recommend for three days in the morning, before your feet hit the floor, you take your pulse. Now, you may not be as disciplined as I am about doing that. It's sometimes your alarm clock is across the room. So uh, at a minimum, um, you wanna just try and get at least one day of the week, at an absolute minimum, um, that you're gonna take your resting heart rate. So that's the first step, is just to get your resting heart rate. Again, I'd recommend uh, over a three-day period, but if you can't, that's fine. Um, you can just go with one day but just realize that that could skew your results, especially if you're doing P90X uh, pretty close to bedtime. Um, the second thing is to actually calculate your maximum heart rate reserve. And the way that that is done is by taking your age, uh, or sorry, taking the number 220 and subtracting your age from it. So for example, if you're uh, 24 years old, you're going to take 220, minus 24 and that will give you 196 and that basically is your maximum heart rate if you're at that level you're borderline you know blowing an artery it's pretty high um, so what you need to do is calculate an actual reserve into that so if you remember um, earlier we had that uh, heart rate that we had gotten earlier um, which was a resting heart rate and in this case We'll just say it was 78. Um, let's say we did it over three days. The first day was 76. The second day was 80. And the third day was 78. We add those together, divide it by three, and you'll get 78. So we've got two pieces of information. We have our, our step one, resting heart rate. The next thing we have is our maximum heart rate, which is 220 minus our age and for our example we're using 24 as a 24 year old male and we have a total of 196. now if we subtract out our um, resting heart rate from 196 we're going to get a number 118. that would just want to put it aside that number for a moment and that is considered our heart rate maximum reserve we're going to use that for other calculations so for right now, two steps, resting heart rate, which is for example, 78, and we have our uh, maximum heart rate, which is 220 minus the age of 24. And so we have 196. 
The third thing that we did was we subtracted our resting heart rate from 196 to give us a reserve of what's called a maximum heart rate reserve of 118. Now we need to calculate the lower limit. We know what our maximum heart rate is. Now we need to calculate the lower end of the spectrum. Um, so or, or what our target heart rate is. Um, so what we're gonna do is take that 118 that we just had, we're gonna multiply it by 0 0.06, which is 60% of the maximum heart rate. And then we're gonna add on 78, which again was our resting heart rate. And for that example, we're gonna get 149. So our third step, just to reiterate, is going to be to calculate the lower limit of our target heart rate, which is basically 60% of our maximum reserve. So we're going to multiply 118 by 0.6. We're going to add on our resting heart rate, which in this case was 78, and we're going to get a total of 149. That is our low limit of our target heart rate. To calculate the upper limit of our target heart rate, we're basically going to look at trying to do 80%. So um, the range of target heart rate is 60, 60 to 80% of your maximum heart rate. The way that we're gonna do that is again, we're gonna take that 118, and this time we're gonna multiply it by 0 0.8, 80%, uh, and add on 78 from our resting heart rate. And that number we'll get is 172. So, we basically have our two numbers. When we are training with P90X and you know Tony says, oh, check your heart rate. Our heart rate for this example is gonna be between 149 and 172. Um, I'll throw up some, uh, uh, some examples here um, on the website. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, the best way to get the actual example, I'm gonna actually put it on the web and it's going to be at www.just90days.com. J-U-S-T, number 90, 90, days.com. Uh, so just slide over there and you'll actually have a working example that you can calculate your target heart rate with. So now you know how to do your upper and lower. So a couple of warnings here. The target heart rate is only an estimate. So um, don't go too far with it uh, and assume that it's absolutely rock solid. It has to be between those numbers for you to be optimal. It's just an estimate. Um, do what you feel you're able to do um, and we'll take it from there. Um, the other thing is that um, if you're just beginning uh, with P90X, you should actually try to get to your lower target heart rate rather than the upper, you know, between the range. Your target heart rate, if you're just starting P90X, will probably be, in our example, 149. Just target the lower end. Uh, that way you're not overexerting yourself. And uh, obviously by overexerting yourself, you're basically increasing your chances of failure or just completely quitting the program because uh, it may appear to be too hard. Um, so use your heart rate as a way to um, check yourself and make sure you're not overexerting yourself. Again, overexertion is just another way of failing with the P90X program.